too. But thank you. Thank you, thank you. Let's give it up for the Lord. He's the one that's worthy, not me. Not me. Since you're already standing, since you're already standing, why don't we go ahead and put our In the Vault text on the screen this morning. Are you thankful for the Word of God? Amen. There's power in the Word of God. The Bible says this in John chapter 1 and verse number 14. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us, and we have seen His glory. The glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father full of grace and truth. That's such a powerful verse. Could we just read it all together this morning? One, two, three. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory. The glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Lord, we thank you that you did come with grace and truth. And this morning we have seen so beautifully and wonderfully illustrated how you came to bring us together. There's nothing like being together at Christmas time. There's nothing like the power of presence. But more important than that is the power of your presence. So thank you for coming to make your dwelling among us. We glorify and honor you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. In 1943, our country was at war. Battle lines had been drawn. In fact, all over the world, there was fighting, there was conflict. It was an attack against tyranny, against freedom. It was a radical dictator that was trying to take over the world and push his own agenda. And Lives were on the line and, and people were hurting and we needed some hope. And there were some songwriters that got together to try to write a song to bring a little bit of hope at Christmas time. And what they tried to do is to think about the American soldier who was somewhere far from home and was dreaming about getting to be home for Christmas. And as they began to write, they came up with these words, I'll be home for Christmas. You can count on me. Please have snow and mistletoe and presents on the tree. Christmas Eve will find us where the love light gleams. I'll be home for Christmas, if only in my dreams. The reality of that song written in 1943 was that just two years earlier, we had been brutally, savagely attacked at Pearl Harbor. Many of our young men and women had been pulled all over the world to fight for freedom. And although they wanted to be home for Christmas, more than likely they would not be home for Christmas. Some of them would be in a foxhole at Christmas. Some of them would be in a field hospital that Christmas. Some of them would be manning a post in some faraway place that they had never heard of until just months before. They wouldn't get the chance to be home for Christmas. And the reason that that song is so powerful is that there is something that is so powerful about being together at Christmas. That's why we're calling today Christmas at Spirit Church because as a family, we're coming together this morning to celebrate Christmas, to celebrate the fact that Jesus came, that the Word became flesh. There's something so powerful about togetherness at Christmas. In fact, we schedule our travel so that we can be together at Christmas. We make preparations and food and buy presents and wrap gifts for the time that we will spend together at Christmas. We clear our schedule of appointments and we try to finish everything up so that we can be together together at Christmas. We try to be fully present in the moment with those who we love the most. Not just physically there, but we try to be completely engaged in our circumstances. In my family, one of my aunts, she has a saying that she likes to say, nothing beats family. Nothing beats family. It's great to be together with friends and people you love, but there's nothing that beats family. There's something so powerful and so connecting when you are together with family. And that's why on days like today, we can share a moment or a meal or a celebration together. It's a special experience because we get to be together. We're together at Christmas and we see trees decorated and overflowing with presents. We get together at Christmas and we enjoy that famous dessert or that holiday treat. For my family, it's warm Dr. Pepper with a slice of orange set on the top of it. It's, it's a great treat. I was talking to a young man in our church this week. I said, what's your family's holiday tradition? He said, it's easy. It's pajamas, popcorn, candy, and Christmas lights. We all get in our pajamas and we drive around looking at the Christmas lights while we have popcorn and candy. Maybe the tradition is putting the kids to bed early because you know that Santa Claus is coming. But 
as great as being together is at Christmas, can I just tell you that the reason that we can enjoy togetherness at Christmas time is because Jesus came from heaven to earth so that we could be together not just at Christmas, that we could be together forever. Forever. He wants us to never be apart. He wants us to be together forever. That's why John chapter 1 and verse 14, the Bible says, The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. If we just look at that verse for a second, when we say the word, that is Jesus. So Jesus became flesh. And if we took at that word flesh and really looked at it in the original language, it means human. So Jesus became human and made his dwelling among us. But we have to understand the Bible was written to an ancient audience. And so the word dwelling would actually be more accurately translated tabernacle or tent. What it means is that Jesus came not just to make his dwelling with us. He came to, to put up residence among us. He said, I'm not just passing through for a little while. I'm going to come and be with you forever. We're going to always be together. This takes Jesus take the wheel to a whole nother level. This is Jesus come camp out in my front yard. Right? Which some of you need Jesus to camp out in your front yard today. Amen? Because Jesus wants us to be together. He wanted, didn't just want to visit. He wants to be with us. And as we study the scripture, it is so evident that this isn't a one-time occurrence. As we look all the way from Genesis to Revelation, we see how we serve a God, we love a Savior who keeps coming to us. Think about it for a moment. He came to Adam and Eve in the garden following their sin. He came to Moses on the mountain to give the Ten Commandments. He came to people throughout the Old Testament in visions and in dreams. Jesus came to earth as our Savior. The Holy Spirit came following Jesus' death and resurrection. And I want to say it loud and I want to say it proud. Jesus is coming again for His church. And He did all of this so that we could be together. If you have your Spirit Church app out, the notes are there for you this morning, or if you want to write it down in your notepad, that would be great. But Jesus came, first of all, so that we could be together externally. Together externally. Now, that sounds kind of funny. What do you mean together externally? Well, in Genesis chapter 1, we looked at it last week, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then in John chapter 1, it says, in the beginning, the Word was God and the Word was with God. It talks about Jesus being there at creation. And in the verse that we studied as we started this morning, John chapter 1, verse 14 says, the Word, the Word became flesh. The Word, you see, it all begins and ends with Jesus. It all revolves around the God who we serve. But in the Old Testament, in the ancient days, people couldn't approach God. No one could see God, and in many ways, they didn't really even know who God was. When the children of Israel were escaping from Egypt after 400 years in slavery, it was God who came to them in the wilderness. And in Exodus chapter 25 and verse 8, he gave Moses instructions and he said, have them make a sanctuary for me and I will do what? Dwell. Dwell. There's that word again, I will dwell among them. I will come make my presence known to them. Even though it is in a tent, I will come and be with them. You see, God has always been trying to be together with us. And God came to them in Exodus, and they were together, but his presence was only present inside of the tent. They called it the tent of meeting. Later in the Old Testament, his presence would come into the temple that they built for God. Now, we know now that God can't be contained by a tent or a tabernacle or even a temple. But in those days, he was. He would allow a portion of his presence to be there. And then Jesus came in human form to live among us. The word became flesh and he made his dwelling among us. But we were still together just externally. Let me explain just a step further. Robin's grandmother passed away last year at the age of 98 years old. She was feistier than any of you will ever think about being. Her pastor described her as a Ukrainian Pentecostal from Manhattan. That's a pretty dynamite combination right there. Towards the end of her life, we went to see her at the care facility in which she was living. And because of COVID and restrictions and regulations, we couldn't get into the building, but they did let us stand outside the window. You're probably familiar with that experience. I'll never forget the sun beating down on our faces that hot summer afternoon as we stood outside Ma's window and we waved to her and she looked out through the window trying to see us, trying to wave back and then 
all of a sudden we picked up paisley god bless paisley the dog god bless us for having paisley the dog and all of a sudden ma's eyes lit up and i will never forget the smile on ma's face as she looked through the window and she said puppy puppy and she was waving hi to our puppy and though we were together, we were together externally. There was a wall, there was a window, there was separation that was there between us. God dwelt among us in a tent. He later came in the tabernacle and then he sent Jesus in human form to make his dwelling among us. In fact, you've heard and seen so beautifully illustrated this morning the story of how Jesus came. And today, our team has prepared for you a very special gift. We have the Christmas story in book form. We have one for every family as you leave this morning. You heard John Conrad, who orchestrated and played the piano. His wife, Talita, is sitting right here on the second row. She is responsible for all of the illustrations that you see. She's the artist that drew every picture that was on the screen and that is here. And as we celebrate the fact that Jesus came, we have a book that we'd like to give to each family as you leave. It's the Christmas story. And our hope and our prayer is that this year and for many years going forward, when your family gathers at Christmas, that you would read the Christmas story together. It's our gift to you as you leave this morning. Jesus came so that we could be together, but we were still together externally. But can I tell you that Jesus didn't come so that we could just be together externally? Jesus also came so that we could be together internally. He didn't want there to be separation between us. He didn't want us to be outside of the window looking in. He wanted to come and live inside of us and be with us. But to do that, he had to first come to earth and live amongst us. You see, when God's presence was in the tabernacle in the temple, only certain people could enter and only on certain days could they go before him. And when Jesus was here on earth, it was only for three years. It was such a short amount of time. And But the Bible says that the word became flesh. John 1, 14, we read it, the word became flesh flesh and he made his dwelling among us in other words Jesus said this you can't make it to me so I'm gonna come to you I'm so thankful for a savior that would do that because all the other religions that we study say do this do that act this way give this much behave like this and then you can come to me Jesus says I'm breaking down all the barriers and I'm coming to you that's why Philippians chapter 2 and verse 6 says, Though he was God, he didn't think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave, and he was born as a human being. But even as a human, we were only together externally. And that's why when Jesus was about to die, he said, It's better for you that I go. Because until I go, the Holy Spirit can't come. But when I go, the Holy Spirit will come to you. And no longer will we be together externally, but we'll be together internally. The Holy Spirit indwells us. That's why 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse number 16 says, Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in your midst? where one time in the Old Testament they had to build or set up a temple or construct a tabernacle for God to come into. He chooses us now as the place where he wants to reside. He doesn't want there to be separation between us and him, so he comes to indwell and to live inside of us so that we can be together internally. And when we say yes to Jesus, and when we accept him as Savior and Lord, he enters our heart and a new level of intimacy and, ex and togetherness that we could never experience comes alive inside of us. But Jesus wants to do more than just be together externally. He wants to do more than just be together internally. Jesus wants us to be together eternally, forever. It's not a temporary thing where he's there and only coming down on certain days to see us. He's there and living and walking amongst us, but three years later he lives and he goes on. He's doing more than just saying, I'm going to live in your heart and that's great and that's wonderful and that's what we want here on earth, but there is coming a day when we will be together with him forever. He's taking us to his home. He's taking us to his father. He's taking us to the place that he has prepared for us. And the verse that we started with this morning, John 1, 14 says, We have seen His glory. The glory of the one and only Son who came where? From the Father, full of grace and truth. He said, I'm together inside of you. Right now I'm living in your heart. But one day soon, we're going to be together eternally, forever. We're never going to be separated. There's not going to be anything between us. Forevermore, we will be together. And when we are, yeah, let's give it up. When we are there, 
we will see his glory. The Bible tells us we have already seen it, but do you know that this is just a pattern? Because we've already seen his glory. We saw his glory at creation. Who could imagine that by random chance all the beauty and splendor of earth would come together? You would almost have to be out of your mind to think that that could be by chance. It is only by a divine creator who breathed it into existence, who caused the planets and the stars and the oceans and the mountains and the prairies and the valleys and Bartlesville, America to come into being. It could only be a divine creator and it's his glory that's being revealed. Moses saw his glory on the mountain. And when he came down off of the mountain, people said, where have you been and what have you done? Because there's something that has changed. It's because Moses saw his glory. We saw his glory when Jesus was baptized. And as he came up out of the water, the voice of the Father said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. We saw his glory in his miracles when he was here on the earth, when he caused the lame to walk and the blind to see and the deaf to hear and the dead to live again. His glory was revealed as a miracle working, powerful, almighty God for whom nothing is impossible. We saw his glory in what we call his transfiguration when his appearance was changed and Moses and Elijah were there on the mountain and his disciples were so in awe that they wanted to build tabernacles there and say, why don't you dwell here? And Jesus said, no, I've got something even better than dwelling here on a mountain. I'm going to dwell in your heart forever so that one day we can dwell together forever in heaven and experience the eternal glory that I have prepared for you. We saw his glory on the cross as he hung there for our sins, as he took our shame and our scorn, as he bore our disappointment and our failures, and he didn't have to do it, but he willingly took the lashes on his back. He willingly stretched out his arms while they were nailed to the cross. He willingly hung there while they reviled him and mocked him. And the Bible tells us that he could have called down all of heaven to come and rescue him and save him. But he said, I want to be together with them forever. So I'm exchanging a little bit of pain now so that we can have glory eternally forevermore in heaven. And in fact, when Jesus was on the cross in John chapter 12, he said, Father, glorify your name. He knew that through his death, God was receiving glory. We saw his glory in his resurrection as they ran to the tomb and they searched for the body and it wasn't there. And can I just tell you boldly, it's not there today either. You can go and you can spend a lifetime searching and you'll never find it because there's not a body there. There's just an empty tomb. He was dead, but he lives forevermore and we have seen his glory. He is risen and he is alive. I believe we'll see his glory again through his return. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 30 talks about what we call the second coming of Christ when he comes back. And there will be a day, and I know that sometimes it seems dark and it doesn't seem like it, but there will be a day when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess and every tribe and nation and kingdom and people and color and creed will bow down in reverence and say that he is the only king. He is the one true God. There is no one like him. We have seen his glory and we We'll see it again. But can I tell you, there's one more. Revelation chapter 21 and verse 3 says that we will see his glory forever. The Bible talks about heaven and says that there is no need for the sun or for the moon because the Son of God is the light that brings light to all of heaven. It's his glory that fills heaven. And that's why Jesus said in John chapter 14 and verse number 1, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. And if it were not so, would I have told you that if I'm going there to prepare a place for you? But verse 3, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may be where I am. In other words, you're not just going to be together externally. We're not just going to be together internally. We're going to be together eternally. He's prepared a place where we can go and where we can be with him, where there's no more separation, where there's no sin, where there's no sickness, where there's no pain, where there's no heartbreak, no offense, no disappointment. There's no anger. There's no rage. There's no uprisings. There's no poverty. It's all about his glory being revealed in us and through us 
us and to us as we live with him forever. And just as powerful as it is that we can be together this morning, how much more powerful when we get to be to heaven. My dad's there. Some of your loved ones are there waiting for you. The people from generations gone by, they're there experiencing his glory and we're going to be there with them. The prophets, the disciples, they're there. They're saying, come, come, you're going to be here forever. But greater than my dad or your loved one or the disciples or the prophets, our Savior is there. Our Lord is there. He is waiting for us. And he says we get to be together forever, not just on Christmas Eve, not just on Christmas Day. We get to be together forever. It's going to last for all time. There's not going to be an ending point to it. He has come and made his dwelling among us so that we can go and make our dwelling with him forever. We'll see his glory. But can I tell you how it all starts? It starts when you say yes to Jesus. It starts when you allow him to come live internally inside of you. This morning, I would invite everyone here just to bow your head for a moment. And if you have never asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, maybe you're listening on the radio hearing us this morning. Maybe you're watching us online today. You're tuned into this broadcast. If you have never invited Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, there's a separation, there's a distance that's there, there's a disconnect that's there, and God sent Jesus so that we wouldn't have to be disconnected from Him. He sent Jesus so that we could be together forever. And if you would just say, Jason, I want to be together with Him forever. I want to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I want to say yes to Him this morning. If that's you, would you just lift up your hand and say yes. I'm saying yes to Jesus right now. I'm saying yes to Jesus. I see one hand near the back. Someone else that you're saying, I'm saying yes to Jesus today. I want Him to be my Lord and my Savior. I'm going to pray a prayer. It's a prayer of confession where we acknowledge that Jesus is now our Lord and Savior. I'm going to say the words. I'm going to invite everyone in the room to repeat after me, regardless of where you're listening or watching from. Let's make this prayer real this morning. Pray these words with me. Dear Jesus, I need you. I am a sinner, and I'm lost without you. But I want to be together with you forever. Would you come into my heart and forgive me of my sins and I will live for you from this day forward in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Now if you prayed that prayer, whether you're watching, whether you're here in the room, would you please say yes to Jesus via a text real quick? Just let our team know the decision that you've made. Let us connect with you. Let us resource with you. Again, it's about being together and we can help facilitate and make that process possible. I'm going to invite everyone now to stand, everyone all across the room. Today's Christmas at Spirit Church. We're celebrating being together. Many of you are here with your family, but some of you might not be with your family. You might say, I'm, I'm here by myself. No, you're not. We're a family. We're a family. So whoever you're sitting by, where you're sitting near, would you just grab a hold of them or put an arm around them? And would you just begin to bless them and pray over them? Come on, let's begin to connect one with another and thank God for this special time that we can be together. Lord, thank you so much that you came from heaven to earth, that we don't have to be separated anymore, that we don't have to be left by ourselves, but you came that we could be together eternally. God, we give you glory and honor and praise for what you have done in our lives, and we thank you that from now until eternity, we will be with you and we will celebrate with you. Thank you that we can be together. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, bright.
Let's go ahead and let's give it up for God one more time. What an amazing morning. Just feel so, so blessed to be a part of it today. But as we leave, I want to pray a prayer blessing over you all. And we want to go out in a special way today. So we're going to have a fun, upbeat play out for the day. But if you'll raise your hands towards heaven. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Now let's go with God this month. Come on.